What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to discuss the TCP handshake guys. So the TCP handshake is one of those very low level things that we software engineers really don't care about but as I dive deep into proxies and backend engineering and more and more low level backend engineering I found myself that this is a very important uh, technology that the users that develop that engineers should really understand because this is one of the most things that slows down uh most of the stuff that we debug and then back in engineering at the application level, right? If you're doing so many of those TCP opening and closing, you're doing so many of these handshakes. So what is this handshake? Why does it exist? How about we jump into it, guys? So guys, if we take a simple example, let's say I'm doing a curl request, right? Or an HTTP, a simple HTTP request, right? Or I'm going, I'm having a browser and I wanted to visit a page, right? The first thing that does that happen is we establish a TCP connection. And we talked about that so many times, right? And this is obviously not true in case of HTTP 3. This is only true uh, in case of 1.1 and HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 2. All right. So I am about to send a GET request, right? I'm preparing my payload. This get request have headers, have cookies, have so much stuff, but eventually it's gonna turn into a bunch of packets, right? And and I am going to send these packets one after the other, right? It could be one packet, could be three, could be seven, could be more, right? So these packets will eventually arrive at the server and the server will pick them up, assemble them, look at them, and we'll say, all right, oh, this is a good request. Let me try to process it. However, the questions that remains here is like, okay, the first thing is like, what if this uh, packet didn't arrive? And you might say, how does the client know that this packet didn't arrive, right? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to introduce the concept of acknowledgement. So each packet has to be followed by an acknowledgement from server that, hey, I have received this packet. I have receive this packet and if the client doesn't receive this acknowledgement that this particular packet has arrived then the client retransmitted that's the feature of the tcp otherwise we will run into corruption all the time the internet is a wild place so the first the second question is like okay hussein how do you acknowledge this packet how do you know how do you identify a packet oh that's a good question right because these packets need to have a unique identifier and this is called a sequence number right so each packet has a sequence number it doesn't have to be one it could be starting from seven eight nine right and and when you when these when you acknowledge something it says okay i acknowledge packet number seven i acknowledge packet number eight or when these receive out of order let's say eight nine seven eight the server can appropriately order these packets right because the server will wait for all these packets and we talked about that many times in this uh, in this video in the in this channel right guys so we'll wait for all these packets and then we'll start reordering if we don't have numbers then you cannot reorder we know now we need sequence numbers for these packets and we know we need what acknowledgement however what we didn't actually discuss like how does the server know that packet number seven is actually the first packet or eight is actually the first, the second packet or nine is actually the packet? How, how does it know that, oh, there might be a packet five or four or three, right? Because it doesn't know. And here's come the step that we require to agree between the server and the client. And this is called synchronization we those two have to agree on the sequence numbers because the client will have their own sequencing and guess what the server will have their own sequencing because the server when when it understand the get request would need to respond with the html page right and, and that building that will require some numbers like say okay i'm gonna start from i don't know 99 100 and 101 doesn't have to be three guys just obviously guys right you know <laughs> right so, and these are the sequencing for the server so we understand we need to synchronize and that is why we need the tcp handshake how about we jump into it guys awesome so now we're about to do a tcp handshake because we understand why it exists the client need to agree on a sequence come up with a sequence 
I'm gonna come up with 700, random number, right? You might say, Hussein, why don't we just start with, with zero and, and call the day? Why the hell we need the TCP handshake? That's a very important thing. And the reason we don't start from the same sequence is because to prevent attacks like uh, replay attacks and, and, and sin attacks, right? Because these, we don't want to give attackers hints, right? That's why the randomness exists, right? And maybe a network engineer call me out if I said anything wrong, but uh, I believe we need to look into it. Maybe we can start from a known, known number. But anyway, all right, so clients start from 700. And since the I'm about to establish the TCP connection, here's the thing, the connection doesn't exist. So it sends something called SEN, right? And says, hey, my sequence number is 700. So now the server knows, oh, you, 700, the client 700, okay, I'm gonna keep a track of this thing, okay. It's my turn now, my sequence number is 200. I'm gonna start from 200. So what the server will do is, gonna respond back with send 200. I know, guys, don't, don't yell at me. I'm, I'm, I'm about to explain something, right? So 700, and now I'm gonna send with 200. However, the server also need to acknowledge that the send has been received. That's just what we talked about, right? How does the client know that the, that request, that send request actually was received? It's just another request, right? So the server, what this does is like it sends an also an acknowledgement, right? And it says the acknowledgement is always equal that whatever the sequence number, right? Plus the length of the packet, right? And the length of the packet for this thing is one. It's called the ghost byte, right? So 700 plus one is called one. So if that if that request happened to be like a big, like, I don't know, 100 byte request, then you're going to get 800 acknowledgement, right? So 701, this will get, okay, 701 acknowledgement, right? And then finally, it's this client turn to acknowledge the sin of the server, right? So the, serve, the client will send back what the acknowledgement 200 plus the size of that request which is also the one so it's 201 right the send is always like it's actually zero but there's like a ghost byte right there is a reason they add this i'm not understanding why exactly but it's always like that the length of that all right however this is wrong this is not what really happens but i wanted to illustrate a, a illustrate what happens exactly so this is like a forehand uh, four four way handshake. That's not that's not what happened. So smart engineers came and says, okay, since this server is actually sending two these two together, we're gonna combine them into one. These two is gonna become one, right? I erase that now. So technically, the server only sends one request request one packet back, and this is called the sin. ACK, right? So technically in the TCP header, there are two bits and it's the SYNC and ACK are being sent. So the SYNC is in this case 200 and the ACK is what? 701, right? So, and they are one packet. Obviously it's it's faster, right? Than sending four packets, but I, I broke them down to explain to you. So this is how the TCP handshake looks like, guys, all right? The first one SYN and then the second SYN ACK and then ACK and then here, finally, we start with the first Git request, right? Right, the actual Git request, which will start with what? 701, right? And when you send 701, right? And it is gonna continue and gonna reply back with the acknowledgement for 701, but I'm gonna, uh, which is what? 701 plus whatever the size of this git request. So if they say, let's say if the git request size is 10, then we're gonna add plus 10, so 711, right guys? But I'm gonna explain this in another video, like what happened after the TCP handshake, or maybe the TS termination, TLS termination, <laughs> TCP termination and all other stuff. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. Really, you don't really need to dive into these numbers, but just pay attention to these three suckers, right? Three requests every time. And every request you send, there is an act for it, right, guys? 
Everything you send to the server, the server must reply with an acknowledgement. An acknowledgement doesn't mean the reply itself, guys. And we're gonna talk about that in another video. An acknowledgement is just telling the server says, okay, I receive your request. That get request, this thing, that's not the response. That's just telling you that, hey, whatever client, whatever you're doing, you can unblock and you can safely even disconnect if you want to because I received your stuff and I'm going to process it, right? So, all right, guys, <laughs> I think I'm going to stop here. I'm going to continue uh, making another video talking about af what happened after the TCP handshake and other stuff. So I really implore all software engineers, all backend engineers specifically, to understand what really happened here. I don't really necessarily ask you to go into the uh, the guts of how the packets look like or the length of the packets leave that to the expert network engineers right if they wanted to go like if then ACK is is, uh, is lost in the ether right and what they do they they have great tools to solve that I think our job is just to understand how it does it's really expensive obviously because there are three requests every time and there are other two requests when you close it right so just understand what's going on behind it and this is just the establishment of the tcp connection so it's an expensive thing that explains why people are moving to udp and then uh, quick just to avoid this uh handshake and, and all other stuff all right guys that's it for me today gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome